All right, my friends, happy Thursday night to you. We got James Larson in the house. We're going to be talking about the Philharmonic BMR HT Tower speakers that James Larson, you just reviewed those a few, I think I posted them last week. They yes. reviewed very well. They measured very well. It's no surprise. I think we've reviewed probably one or two other Philharmonic speakers and you always walk away impressed, not only with the execution of the engineering, but just the build quality the aesthetics, the cabinetry. I mean, it seems like it's the, it's, it's the great package. It's got it all, you know, it's got the looks, it's got the beauty, it's got the brains. So I wanted you to kind of give us a rundown of the speaker, the design aspects of it, the measurements. Of course, if you guys want to read ahead and you want to look at how James described the sound of these speakers, I'll link up the review. It's on our website, audioholics.com. It's on the homepage right now, a few articles down. I'll link it up in the video description. And I do encourage you guys to read because reading gives you so much of the little nuances that you may not get in the live stream discussion here. But uh, James, I'm going to put up the PowerPoint presentation and just have you kind of lead through it, okay? Sure, okay. Okay, the Philharmonic BMR HT Tower. Like you said, we published this review last week and now we're just going to go into a little bit more depth on some things. But if you want the, you know, the full in-depth uh, review, read the review. So um, I guess uh, we can go to the next page. I should say, yeah, go to the next page. I'll say oh, we should state the price is 4,500 a pair. And so it's, the, I mean, it's a little pricey, but it's pretty darn good. As you'll see, a really, really good value, in my opinion, at least. Specifications, it's uh, MTM. It's got a two um, of those tectonic BMR drivers that um, uh, Philharmonic uh, seems to like. Uh, two purified drivers. Those uh, the purified base drivers are the 6.5, um, really, really like state of the art base drivers. And it's got an AMT tweeter, which I don't think Philharmonic has used before, but it's a really good um, AMT tweeter. And I think the difference between this speaker and their other speakers is like this is going for a wide dynamic range, where the others were kind of going for l lower extension, right? Yeah. This is like BMR HT. BMR is of course the mid-range drivers that in the in the name and the HT is home theater and so this goes for dynamic range, and so this gives up some uh, base extension in favor of dynamic range. So and I think it's important to note that um, since this is really meant for being put in a very high-end home theater system, people are going to be using subwoofers with these speakers, right, to extend the base. Yes, that that's what they're expecting. Most most users will use subwoofers. Nonetheless, they get pretty decent extension down to forty hertz. So, like, if you're like an audiophile who like some just listens to like acoustic um, recorded music, this does the job for that perfectly fine, you know. But um, there are other speakers, of course, dig lower. So, I guess we can go to the next slide. Well, one thing that's really cool is just the driver complement, the quality of the driver, especially those purified drivers. Those are not cheap drivers, right, James? Yeah, retail, they retail for like $419 each. So like- for each um, of those base drivers. Yeah, each, each at least. I mean, I'm sure that Philharmonic gets like a, a discount for like a, a large buy, but um, that's still a lot of driver for a speaker. That's still, you know, 4,500, but you're talking about, I think $1,600 of just base drivers alone and a 4,500. 4,500 yeah. speaker. It's it's really, really, really good value. Uh, it's pretty sure. much unheard of, uh, yeah, to get that kind of quality in uh, in a price like this. Sure. Here's the packing. Um, since these speakers can only be bought, you know, online, they're they you know they can only be um, received by mail, and so the packing is important. <clears throat> and um, the packing is really double boxed, and each speaker is fully enclosed by polyethylene foam blocks. So like this is really good packing. It's worth noting your, your speaker is going to be protected. And so like, um, you know, it, it's a, this is also expensive. Packing is also expensive. And they, they've, um, you know, they've spent the money to make sure this gets um, in your hands in, a, in good shape. So you can go to the next slide. Yep. So here's the uh, pictures of the speakers with and without the grills. For some reason, we're always, we're like the only ones to publish pictures of the speakers with grills on of any review, right? Most. Yeah. Nobody publishes like, but like people use grills, so people want to, we should know what they look like with grills. But like, most websites, even product pages, don't show speakers with grills, but we do, right? <laughs> like, you don't want to know what these speakers look like with them without grills, especially since it's largely an aesthetic choice, right? 
so I, like, i'll be honest with you they look awesome with the grills on i think they look fine i think the girls look fine i kind of prefer them without but like a lot of speakers you know it, they look fine either way but anyways that's something to know so we're the only place that you can actually i don't even think philharmonic's product uh page <laughs> shows what these speakers look like with the grills like come on you guys. know what i wish they would have done honestly is i wish they would have cut the grill off right at the bottom woofer so you could see the rest of the wood cabinet on the front baffle you know what that's actually a good idea i'm i'm sure they're like, like dang i wish we thought of that <laughs> but yeah that's a good idea uh, that's that's that would have been pretty good. So I guess you can go to the next slide. Yeah, they look good. Bottom line for those slides. So getting into the drivers, here's like kind of kind of a close up of the AMT driver. The um, AMT. So um, Full Harmonic usually uses those RAAL ribbon tweeters. Really, yeah. really good, good, good tweeters. Right, excellent tweeters. But they don't. They're not really known for as as most tweeters. Not known for dynamic range. Right. They just don't get that loud, and um, they're a little fragile to to be given a lot of wattage to. But AMTs, on the other hand, can get very loud. They have a, a much wider dynamic range. They're a lot more robust in the design. And this is a really good one. This is by Mundorf. You know, who use, they're known for the like kind of high high quality, super expensive drivers, yeah. Components, you know, for speakers. Um, this is a really expensive. I think this is a, a five hundred dollar um, AMT tweeter alone. Just like so, that's a. It's an expensive and very good, you know, performing tweeter. And then you can go to the next slide. Um, there's that there's that purify woofer that thing is awesome yeah the purify i mean it's it's quite technical how this is much better so the 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 distortion on the speaker i mean the distortion characteristics is much better than normal like 6.5 inch drivers much 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 better orders of magnitude better um and there's a lot of technical detail that goes into that and how the pole piece is designed the, the, the magnetic saturation of the pole piece there's like a a, a copper cap the um the shorting rings and the shorting cap was very, very carefully designed and modeled. Also, the surround has been very, very carefully modeled to minimize distortion and, and maximize, you know, linear um, throw. And so it's, it's. I, I don't. We don't have time to go into the technical, the gory details of it. But mm -hmm. Aaron, Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, Corner actually has a really extensive review. I mean, in, or interview with the designer of this driver. And it, it's if you, if you want to know the gory details, I suggest you look that up. That was uh, probably the best resource. I'll Is that there. Bruno Putzi's from Purify that designed it? I th it's, I don't think Bruno Putzi, but I think it's it's from Purify. So it's his company. Yeah. Same so, company yeah. that, is the, that does that really state-of-the-art class, the amplifier that I reviewed for NAD, the NAD M23. So you know Purify is the real deal. They put some incredible engineering behind their products. Yeah, it's really, really quite good. So yeah, look look at throw that interview that Aaron at Aaron's Audio Corner does with the Purify engineer whose name escapes me at the moment, sadly. Yeah. Interesting I'm, that they didn't make these bi ampable or bi wireable. They're just single posts on the back of the speaker. I know. It's like that's good common sense. I that's good. I, I'm glad. Lars. Lars, yeah. thank you. Same yeah. thank you. Can't, can't remember his full name, but yeah. Um, anyways, on the on the right, you have a picture of the back. It's actually transmission. This is not a normal ported loudspeaker it's a transmission line design is it a quarter wave yes quarter wave line yeah. transmission line otherwise it would have been much 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 larger you know to be a, a proper line, line transmission uh, or transmission line design and so it, instead of like like kind of trying to um reducing uh the uh uh like inner uh what do you call them the modal like the modes and the um the the dimensional modes in the cabinet this actually mm -hmm. banks on them for more output at uh, the low end and so that's i guess you read the review for a less garbled <laughs> description of a line transmit a transmission line design but yeah yeah so i mean we've been reviewing products like this for a while like salk sound who phil harmonic his uh dennis has worked had done some designs for them um yeah they we should had say a they had dennis a murphy wave. is the guy dennis, dennis murphy yeah. yeah and he does designs for, for other people like salk too yeah yeah so he's done quarter wave uh transform speaker designs like this before the first one we we reviewed was the salk song tower and i think that was like in 2006. so this is like not new this is something that's been kind of dennis's staple i think on a lot of his products sure yeah and this you know has a nice big port just nice binding posts. It works, and you'll you'll see that in the measurements. Here's an image of the um, crossover, and the crossover, the components on the crossover alone has to be over a hundred dollars. So like, yeah, really, really good. You know, just um, 
a beefy crossover, well well put out, well put together. No, um, doesn't cheap out anywhere, you know. So it's just, just like it's just really good. So like, but just then, be careful. Crossover guy doesn't look at this, and he'll, he'll start <laughs> trying to fetishize it with uh, different components. So yeah, well, looks, he couldn't do a better job than what's it, been done here. I agree. Sure. It looks awesome. Yeah, so really good uh, components, um, many many pieces, and uh, very high quality, very good tolerances, and everything. So you can you can go to the next. Um, yeah, the, the one uh, kind of complaint I had about this speaker was the feet. The the standard feet that it comes with aren't very good. It's these very narrow spikes and these very narrow these small pucks that the spikes go on, and so like, eh, not very good, right? But the good news is that you can add optionally add um uh a set of um, outriggers and spikes mm -hmm. that are much better than this. That those will become available. That, that optional upgrades that even like um, people who've already bought the speakers can can uh, can buy from um, Philharmonic. And I think the the price of the, the upgraded feet are like 150 or something, 125, 150 That's something in that ballpark. Very reasonable. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, honestly, when when you're dealing with a tall a tall tower like this. I like having outriggers. It adds stability so nobody can knock the speaker over, and it looks badass to have outriggers. I don't think any large tower should not have outriggers. They shouldn't just be putting spikes or cones under them. Put an outrigger system. It's worth it. Yeah. The, the next speaker, I think the next slide shows the outriggers that you can upgrade to. See, look at that. There, there's a spike, there's spike for the um, BMR HD tower on the right, and there's the upgraded uh, spike, and there's the outrigger picture, you know? So, like, it's a well worthwhile upgrade. So if you're going to upgrade, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to buy these speakers, do do this upgrade because it's worth it. Because the, the regular feet aren't. I guess if you have a carpeted floor and you don't care that much, it's all, you don't really need it. Um, but yeah, I, I, otherwise use the outriggers. So like, I, I, or, or they could throw some ISO acoustics. I know you love those, James. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, if you you can, I think I think they're going to offer those too. Honestly. They're, I think they're, they're gonna have some. ISO I like them. I, I got them. When you say what you want about them, it does change the sound. Uh, whether it's better or not is up to you. It's subjective, but it definitely <laughs> does do something. Yeah, it does, it does something. It just it drains your wallet faster. <laughs> <laughs> they're not inexpensive. Yeah. Okay. I get into the measurements now. This is how I measure the speaker outdoors, kind of uh, hoisted up in the air. There's the microphone you can see on the right side of the picture, and we get like it's about seven to eight feet up. And so we, so we got to give James Larson credit. He's, I don't think you go to the gym much, right? I mean, your gym workouts basically are lifting speakers up on this platform. And that takes a lot of strength to do that in coordination. Cause it's not like lifting a dumbbell. You're lifting a four and a half foot tower. You're probably doing this all the t many times by yourself. I have some help sometimes. I usually have help, but, um, but yeah, it does take, but the problem is it's not that the, the weight is a big deal. It's, it's that, this is a beautiful speaker with a beautiful gloss yeah, you don't finish, want to right? Damage it. And and just to get it up there without trying without like um scuffing the speaker at all or scratching it, that's the challenge. And that's it's tricky. And so like, yeah, it's it, that's where I get my, you know, the the workout, you know. <laughs> that's yeah, that's and it's there you go. You, you know, got you got some local help there. You know, again, James, I appreciate you taking this effort to do measurements in reviews. That's what really kind of stands that's what makes us stand apart from many of the magazines that don't do that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry you dropped out for a second there. I didn't ca quite catch the end of there, but just saying we, you know, very appreciative that you're doing this, that you take oh, okay. this effort to go outdoors and do these measurements. Yeah, well, that's the way to get these measurements. You can't you can't get them unless you have some like the like clipple near field scanner or if you have an anechoic chamber, this is how you have to be this is how they have to be done. So in order yeah. to get the resolution we get. But I guess we can move on to the next slide. Here's a 3D um like kind of waterfall. Man, that's smooth. Yeah, it's really, really, really good and uniform. Like it's beautiful. This is beautiful. Like and there's you, no wave. There's no waveguide on the tweeter. I mean, this is just. You don't need a waveguide really to get good directivity matching. You don't need it. That's one way to get it, especially yeah. for matching it to larger drivers, like large bass drivers or a large mid-range driver. Yeah, you would need a waveguide then. But the way, uh, but these are kind of like small mid-range drivers. So like, the directivity matching isn't that hard to do. But no, it's really, really good and really well done. Obviously, the off-axis responses are very, um, very consistent and smooth with respect to the on-axis response. So this is just really good. But we can get a better look at this in the next slide. Very flat response, like yeah, the yeah really good. That was very free from resonances too. I mean, it's just clean. It's just beautiful. Yeah, this is a beautifully flat response. Like from I think that's from what 
300 hertz to like all the way to 22.5 kilohertz and like yeah. just really good i mean there's not not much else to say there's, you can see some small resonances here and there nothing audible though nothing even close to being audible it's just a beautiful I, like I said in the review, this is another Philharmonic speaker that it's so good as a consumer speaker that you could actually use these for like mixing and mastering work in a studio, right? You could use this professionally and it'd be just as good as most um, studio monitors. So like, right. yeah, you, you could, I mean, you really, you really could. And like a lot, most studio monitors, I measured a bunch, they don't have a response this flat. So like, this is better than a lot of like, like um, the lower cost. I mean, I guess there, is, there are studio monitors that can surpass this and like linearity, but not not that many you know so this is just just a great speaker and the nice thing about a speaker that measures like this that has uniform off axis response is if you do want to do any kind of eqing to it it'll work on a speaker like this as opposed to one that has crazy off axis response or is just very non-linear you know yeah and not only that but it's or in room response is a lot more predictable so right. it, the way it's going to sound in room it's going to be it's going to sound like that in a lot of rooms and like more consistent yeah, and like a, a speaker with like weird off-axis response, you know, with not much correlation to the on-axis response, there's no telling how it's going to sound in any given situation, you know. Yeah. So, and this is just another look at the same data, kind of a bird's eye view and using colors instead of raised lines and like really, really nice directivity matching, I think out to like, like 70 hertz, I mean, 70 degrees. So it has a pretty wide angle, not quite as wide as the speaker, uh, their Philharmonic speakers that use the RAAL tweeters but very wide and like you get very uniform sound out to like 60, 70 degrees. You can listen to this off axis, way off axis and it'll sound great. So like, that's kind of the bottom line there. You know, there's, um, the review obviously goes more into the descriptions of all this, but yeah, um, here's a, here's a, a, a graph of the low frequency response. And I have to do this differently than I do. I can, you can't get this a free air response of the low frequency. So we do ground plane testing of this. Yeah. And it's, it's essentially anechoic. And you can see uh, it's a pretty, very, pretty flat response down to like 50 hertz, this very slight elbow that goes down to 40 hertz. And then you get almost like a, a second order. Roll I was going to say it looks second order roll off. It's hard to see the numbers, but it, to me, it looks second order. It, well, transmission line designs doesn't necessarily like roll off like um, a ported, like standard a ported, ported design, yeah. which has a fourth order 24 dB per octave. This is almost like a 12 dB per octave roll off. So. You so you'll get, get more room gain in the 30 to 40 hertz range than you would out of a traditional ported, right? That's exactly right. And so these actually have decent extension. Not, not, they give up extension compared to other full harmonic, uh, especially the BMR tower, but the BMR, this is the BMR HD tower. This still gets pretty good extension. Like a normal tower speaker would have this kind of, like from another manufacturer, we might have this kind of extension and call it full range. Mm -hmm. Philharmonic doesn't really call it, claim to be it, its full range. They they kind of expect people to use subs with it, but it's still pretty good extension. Yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, you reviewed the the BMR tower as well. Yes, and it, it it's, yeah, it's very good down to below thirty hertz, and like it, so, if you want the extension, that's the one to get. But you do sacrifice dynamic range to get that. Right. So, and here are the uh, impedance. Uh, I measured, I actually started using the DAT system because the system I had previously started giving wacky results, right? So I, yeah. I, I went and got that DATS thing. And you can see we're pretty good, nice, even. There's nothing really to complain about. It's just. It, well, the saddle it, points are pretty symmetric. Yeah, they're, they're symmetric. Keep, keep, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's the tuning. The tuning is always very well done on the Philharmonic speakers. They're not like really wacky or the like, resonances of the cabinet and the versus the bass drivers are always pretty even. We can see here mm -hmm. that the resonant, the port resonance is pretty smack dab on 40 hertz. And so that's kind of the extension you can expect for this. But other than that, it's a four ohm speaker. It, it, should, it yeah. wouldn't be that hard to drive, you know? So like- No, it doesn't dip below 3.2 ohm. So it's def for by IEC standards, it's definitely a four ohm speaker. It's very much a four ohm speaker. And like, it's fine. There's nothing to worry about here. It's like, it's all good news basically. Um, So, yeah. No wiggles, no wiggles in the impedance plot means, you know. There's no cabinet weird resonances or yeah. kind of driver resonances or anything like that. Yeah. So like, now this is kind of, I, I do near field measure. We don't publish these, but I do them. But I thought I'd, I'd bring this one in here to make kind of a point that um, if if you saw these, like these, if you saw this, just this and not any like far field measurements, you'd expect this to be kind of a rocky, you know, response overall to sum up to, to be a rocky response. The reality is that some of those were a very flat response, but what I see a lot 
not a whole lot, but sometimes I get speakers where their near field responses are beautifully flat over a wide bandwidth, right? And then um, when you do a far field um, measurement, it's like, it's not nearly as good. It's like, it's kind of wacky, you know, things get rough and weird, right? And like, you'd expect that to be true of this if you just looked at this, but no, um, this is designed, you know, in the, in the far field, but you, so you can't, you can't design a speaker with just near field measurements and right. expect it to, to be, like turn into a great speaker. And I see that, I see, I see that speak, pe you can always tell when people design a, a, a speaker that's only like been designed for near field uh, measurements, right? It doesn't sum up to a great speaker in the far field, but you know, this does, this, this, this um, um, you, you, this turns into a good far field measurement, even though you might not expect to, because these are kind of like, kind of a weird responses, you know, for, for near field driver measurements. It's like, that's, it takes more effort to do that. And it's like, some people don't do it, but obviously for full harmonic does, this is, it's just evidence of really good crossover design for, yeah, for all the, so you hear that don't go and upgrade your crossovers guys. If you buy these. Yeah. This, the crossover makes this work. Yeah. Um, so this is just a quick graph of the like grill, the response of the grill versus uh, grill on versus off. And I, the grill doesn't do the speaker any favors. You probably couldn't really hear it. The, the kind of like um, diffraction that it causes those little. So the green curve is uh, the grill on curve. And there's like, you can see there's a lot more, well, not a whole lot more, but a little bit more rugged, a little bit more, you know, ragged. And it's because of the diffraction from the grill frame. It's, it now, wouldn't be now all... you purposely lowered the level on the green tray so you could see the differences or yeah no they're done at the same level i just separated the curves so that they were they're actually the i just kind of like spread them apart by a few db so you could get a, a sense of how you know how they kind of like um look versus each right. other and so like um yeah the, it's fine but if you want the best performance for your speaker don't use it with a grill but it's not going to be a huge difference if you do use it with a grill so that's just there for people's like curiosity or whatever. Yep. Okay. So summing, summing this all up, the pros, as we've seen, very accurate loudspeaker, very accurate, very balanced tonality, um, on and off axis. So the dispersion is really good. The dynamics of everything, like we should have said, um, for the BMR driver, the normal BMR drivers are really good, but the ones that are using this has an even wider dynamic range than the traditional, the regular ones that are used in other philharmonic speakers. So like this is, um, the, this plus the AMTs plus those um, purified drivers give this a much, much wider dynamic dynamic range than like conventional tower speakers. It's really, really good. And you, yeah, you can crank these things. Um, it also looks 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 nice as a part of the pros. And and one thing we should mention, th while this it, it's had, it does give up extension, it, it, it increases dynamic range. And what you can also do with that is you don't have to make a huge or heavy loudspeaker like the BMR, the regular BMR tower as a much larger speaker and it's heavier. This is mm -hmm. significantly smaller and not nearly as heavy. I think it's under 60 pounds. And so like- Can you imagine getting a pair of these speakers and throwing a, a pair of uh, the dual 10 inch subs from Paralysons? You know, the, oh. the, the D210 or the 10, whatever it is, the 10S. Yeah, D210S or- yeah, yeah get a people... pair of the, get a pair of those and throw that with these speakers and you got yourself a, a killer system a banging system yeah you would have an awesome system for sure yeah but all right, going on to the cons uh, the only thing that i had any complaints about was the feet but you can upgrade those for a pretty reasonable you know uh premium so like do that and this is still a great 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 value like yeah the summary, a powerful and nice looking power speaker that gives up low space for increased dynamic range and low distortion while being reasonably sized. Like, like we said before, the low, the low frequency extension is still good enough for acoustic music, but you know, for movies and maybe certain mu music types like our hard electronic bass or pipe organ, you'd want to sub with these, this speaker. But mm -hmm. you know, everything else really good. So, and, and then the competing speakers, I don't know. I have, we've, looked at some of these i know you've heard the martin logan motion uh, xtf 100s i know you like those yep matt has those in now for review as well um the calf r5s and r7 metas are about the same prices that this speaker i'm sure they're quite good i think um i i don't i think they'd be probably similar and like the they probably have a like a tighter dispersion i guess but not as wide of a dynamic range as uh these um 
VMR HT towers. I'm sure they're good though. Um, the Focal Vestia number fours are the same price as these. I'm sure they're quite good too. I, we actually, we looked at the, we took a look at the Focal Vestia number threes, and well, there's a review coming up with those, and oh, I'll just save our conclusions for that review. You can, you can wait for that. That shouldn't be too long until that gets printed. Yeah. Also, in direct competition and and the price range is the BMW 704S3s, which like mm -hmm. BMW has our signature sound. You might like it. Yeah, it's definitely not neutral. It's not neutral. Some people like it. Some people don't. I, I would recommend you like audition them <laughs> if that's what you mm -hmm. want, right? I, I think they sound pretty good when they're set up correctly. Otherwise, uh, you know. Then there's the Revell F206s. I'm sure they're really good. I, I've heard a lot of Revell speakers. They're all really good. And they all generally chase the same performance target, neut neutral and somewhat wide dispersion. I'm sure that would be good, but like, you know, it, it's a reliable. Revell is a lot reliably good loudspeaker manufacturer. There's also the Ascend Acoustics ELX. That's kind of a new speaker that, um, that I like. You never them. really hear about them. They have their following. They have yeah. a following. And the, the, those are almost the exact same price as these, the uh, ELX with the Titan domes. I think they're pretty good. They actually publish, they publish, they're very transparent about their um, the performance, performance of the speakers because they got one of those cool little near field scanners and they just publish those measurements on their product page. That's so, great. Yeah. So they're, and it looks like a good, good, good speaker. Something, I guess, that's, you'd have to, in a way, the, uh, what those do well versus what these do well. Um, I, I would still imagine these have a considerably higher, wider dynamic range, but maybe not as much low frequency extension. And and uh, the last uh, speaker that's competing against these on this list is the Definitive Technology Dimension DM70s. You have those in for review too, don't you? Yeah, we're reviewing those. Um, that that hopefully that won't be too long before that, that's published. I I like those speakers. They're very different. Those are also I think they're really good, but I don't want to spoil the review. You know, right here, you just wait for that review. You know, if you want the the real scoop on them, but yeah, we're reviewing those, and I think those are um, an alternative, a good alternative too. But wait for the review. I don't want to spoil any anything at this point, you know, for those. Yeah. So that's kind of the bottom line there. Uh, the end. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it looks like a nice system if you're building. I think if you're building a high-end two-channel system, then you're focusing on, or if you're doing a multi-channel music system for listening to Atmos, Spatial Audio, or just 5.1. Um, this looks like a great option. Now, do they have a center channel that goes along with it? They're working on one. They're okay. working, there's none at this time, but they're working on one. And like, hopefully it'll come out soon. That That's probably the one thing that this needs is like, for a home theater system, there's not really a matching center channel at this time. Yeah, so I you'd know have that... to use maybe the BMR monitor. And if you could put it under the TV, or how big is the monitor? Is it small? It's it's not really ideal for that sort of thing. Uh, it wouldn't match the dynamic range of these things. So oh, you okay. want you'd want something to have that similar dynamics. You could substitute something like a really good um, other centered speaker. In the meantime, like Perlison has a really good one. Uh, Ravel has a very good centered speaker. Um, or the Polk L the Polk L L four hundred excellent. Yeah, yeah, the excellent centered speaker. So like, but I guess you know you could if you had like a. I know if you're, if you're using a projection screen, you could just use three of these BMR HD towers, and that would be the ideal. Actually. That would suck. You're hiding in beautiful cabinetry. Then. It would. Yeah, I know. that's actually one thing I mentioned. Um, Propel Harmonics said, you know, these would actually be very good in like a dedicated home theater, but it would be a shame to like, you know, it'd be kind of a waste to have this nice um, finish be mm -hmm. hidden behind something. So I said, you guys could also think about uh, using having a model just having a sort of like a basic black mat no they should have a flush fine. mount equivalent they should do a flush mount for architectural you know put it behind that, a that would be good screen. yeah that'd be that'd be a good idea too well put we'll three have, of them behind the screen yeah we'll have to talk to them about that <laughs> yeah oh uh, okay yeah well that's that you know, so there's there's things that, that yeah you can use them they're, they're good for anything really except for unless you want to use unless you want uh floor standing speakers that have really deep bass extension these don't quite have that, but everything else they do really, really well at. So really mm -hmm. good value. And and also, Ooh. like I said in the review, if you add up the cost, the retail cost of the components that they're that we can see in those, like it's like it's crazy good value. It's like yeah, 
Yeah, any other manufacturer would be charging twice what these guys are. Dude, it was like 30, someone in the comments said it was like $1,300 a speaker just in drivers, not even including the crossover. And then you got to factor in the cabinetry and then ship. Is the shipping separate? The 4,500 plus shipping, right? Or is it? I, I believe that's including shipping. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's an excellent deal. Very, really good bargain. We consider the cost of the components and the premium quality of the components used in the speaker. Somebody was asking, I can't find the comment now, how do these compare to the to the BMR Tower? I think we already answered that. The BMR Tower obviously has more bass extension. It, it doesn't have as much dynamic range as the speaker. So my guess is if you're setting up a two-channel system without subs, go with the BMR Tower. But if you're setting up a system with a multi-sub um, hookup and you're doing whether it's two-channel or even a multi-channel, go with this speaker. It's got some advantages there. I think the BMR Tower would also have a slightly wider dispersion and maybe a little more even dispersion because of that RAA 12, uh, RAA um, ribbon tweeter. It, it does have a wider dispersion pattern. And that's That would be something, but like... Plus shipping. I, I figured there's no way he can include shipping for that price. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I, this is, I don't know. I don't know. I have to look, you know. Is shipping an additional cost or is that uh, included in the price? I. Yeah, Dennis just said it's plus shipping. Okay, yeah, it's just, it's a really good bargain. It's crazy good bargain if you're like looking for some high fidelity speakers that have real punch. And also they aren't huge, like you said, they are not huge and they're not heavy. So like, they're not just a chore to like, you know, move around or they don't really get in the way, you know, they're not giants. So Well, I think the next thing we do for Phil Harmonic is get you the, um, a pair of bookshelves like the 1801s and it's kind of an old time tested design. Um, Definitely want to get your take on that and, and you know. Sure. Yeah. I mean, compares, I yeah. love anything from Power Market. So, so far, it's been there like, I've reviewed three of their products and they're three for three. Every, if you're a single one, a home run, as far as I'm concerned. So, like, I'm happy to review it, you know, have anything that they, they want to send me. I'm sure it'll be great. Awesome. Well, guys, make sure you read the review. It's linked up in the video description below because James put a lot of detail not only in the measurements and, and the design philosophy, but he talked extensively about the listening experience he had in his reference system. So if you want further insights, if you're on the market for the speaker, I definitely encourage you to read that review. And don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. Please hit that subscribe, hit the thumbs up. James, once again, thank you for all your efforts here. Much appreciated. I'm glad that this review turned out to be, you know, a very high quality product that you revealed. So, so am I, cause, you know, I, I'd rather deal with good stuff than like not great stuff. So yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap. And until next time, my friends keep listening. <laughs>